Noel. So you said something really interesting about the ROI. Okay. So your target is 25%. I'm assuming that's not annually. That's over the lifetime, but kind of talk me through those. Oh, numbers. that's annual. Very. In okay. You're talking about 25% annually. Okay. Now I got it. <laughs> yeah. Cause remember, gonna, my, my I actual ROI is <laughs> over the last decade. Uh -huh. are over 50%. Nice. They're over 60%. I have some years where they're 70 and 80% based on this strategy that I'm doing. My world is actually not built around real estate. Okay. It's, it's actually built around three letters, ROI, which is the performance of money relative okay. to risk. Okay. And, and so, you know, real estate, as you know, Noel has several profit centers. Like for example, when I do a buy and hold deal, I'm not going to buy in my backyard there's 324 markets. I'm going to invest literally in one of the top five markets. What does that mean? It means that my appreciation schedule is going to be so much higher than everything else. And why can I depend on that? Because I'm selecting a market. Like for example, Jonesboro. Blue Georgia? Oval, yes. <laughs> Clay Blue, County. Blue, yeah. Blue, yeah. Blue Oval yeah. City yeah. has Ford bringing in and an $11 billion plant, including 11,000 jobs for homes that they don't have. That's creating a supply demand crunch. That's gonna create just as many jobs for restaurants and hotels and fast food and services and everything else. That one, that one little piece alone means that in my opinion, the new homes that I'm building out there for 180 grand in the next five to seven years, are going to be worth well over $300,000. What kind of ROI am I going to be getting on my money? A well over 50% per annum. Now that's made up of appreciation. And then I also outsource the paying off of the home to my tenants. So I get principal reduction ROI. Well, I get positive cash flow ROI. In that market, I'm getting a five or 6% cash on cash. And let's talk about the depreciation of the tax benefit, which for someone paying in a 20% bracket, that's usually a 4% added benefit. So if my cash on cash is six, and I've got my cash, uh, my so my cash and cash on six, my principal reduction is four, my tax benefit is four, I'm sitting at 14. And then because that a big appreciation number, people don't get the power of leverage. I'm putting out 20% of the money on a 20% down payment. The bank's putting up the eight, other 80%. That gives me a five-fold increase on whatever appreciation is. If that market experiences, let's call it 8% appreciation, I'm going to get 40% because I'm only putting up a fifth of the money. 40 plus 14, that's 54%. This is what I do every day, all day long. It is time for you to change your life. You need to come to the Grow Your Wealth event September 27th through the 29th in sunny Orlando, Florida. We literally are having a three-day event with me, Noelle Randall, where I am going to be teaching you about getting business credit, getting approved so you get business funding, and how to use those business funds to create wealth for yourself. You literally can use business credit and business funding to get millions of dollars in funding in your business's name and use that funding to buy income-generating assets. You can buy real estate, you can buy stocks, you can buy inventory for your business. You can actually grow your wealth and you do not have to rely on your personal credit and your personal savings. There is so much money out there available for businesses and it is time for you to learn how to do that and grow your wealth. Get your tickets right now. We are selling out quickly and you can use code YouTube to save. Go right to the checkout right now, growyourwealthevent.com. Use the code YouTube and save right now. I cannot wait to see you September 27th. Don't be late. Let's go. Wow. Okay. I love that. I love that. I'm glad you shared that because you're really even like teaching me. I can say that's why I follow you. If, you. if you're watching this, follow Chris Crone. I've been following him for many years. He also has an amazing TikTok. And so this is this is really great because you're saying something that I don't even think most people realize. And I, and I tell them, I actually usually say there's a golden trinity of real estate, appreciation, cash flow, and equity. So it's not just the cash flow because I yes. feel like too many people get wrapped up in, in the cash flow. That yeah, well, and cash flow, I always tell people that's for the end of your journey, not at the start of your journey, okay. right? In the beginning, you got, you're starting with little to nothing. Your yeah. goal is not to make it produce. Your goal is to make it grow. Right. Cash flow is production. Growth is how you take a little bit of money. Like when I took $3,300 and I turned it into $1.6 million. How yeah. did I do that? I yeah. focused on big discounts. I focused on a buy and hold strategy and high appreciating markets. Yeah. That's how we won.
I love it. I love it. And I think that is something that people don't realize and, and why real estate is the number one way to wealth. It really is not just the cash flow. It really more so is about the appreciation, properties going up in value over time, buying distressed properties and highly appreciating areas. It sounds like is what you're saying, the combination of those two things. Yes. So let's talk about... Um, Another amazing thing that you're always teaching on is, 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 is pushing people to get in there and, and just start and just go. One of the things I think that always stops people is what? Fear. 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 Let's talk about that. Why? Why is it all this fear? If they're seeing a Chris Crone who was able to start in his 20s and become a millionaire and the, you know, Noel and the, the, the Dave, even Dave Ramsey is rich. I mean, we don't like, it, but he's very rich. So you know yeah. what I'm saying? It has lots of real estate too. That's the irony to some of these things. Um, why do you think there's so much fear that exists and, and kind of how do you, how do you coach and talk people through some of that? Well, unfortunately, Noel, I think most people, they're lone wolves and that mm. means that they have to do it themselves and they're familiar with their insecurities and their own weaknesses and they pander to them. And uh, listen, I would not be where I am today if I had succumbed to my fear and I had every reason to be afraid. In fact, in the beginning, I was afraid. I was afraid to buy my first house. My family wasn't for it. My in-laws weren't for it. My wife was nervous and scared. I was kind of making a big choice all on my own. But the reason why I made it is because I had a mentor that guided me through the process. Yeah. And so when you're doing things you've never done before, there's always two ways, your way or the most successful person's way. And the reality is the most successful people, they're going to guide you to the top of the mountain as best as possible. Imagine for just a moment, climbing Everest without uh, a knowledgeable Sherpa that's right. done it a hundred times, right? right. Or, or imagine a Sherpa that's done it twice. And he says, well, I have a 50% survival rate because I lost <laughs> one on my last trek. That would be a bad, bad gig. But financially, people love to go it alone. They're like, I've been to a seminar. I read a book. Chris, I watch you on YouTube. I'm good. And I'm like, you know, if you want to be really smart, then yeah. you got to get with someone that can make sure you're doing it right. Because in real estate, you could get a hundred details right miss the one flaw, the crack in the foundation, and you wind up with a $150,000 bill to lift the house and do the pylons. And you just didn't know to look for that because you're inexperienced. And so yeah, yeah. I, I, I think you overcome fear, not by getting knowledge. I think you overcome fear by having someone walk you through it. I love it. I love it. I feel like that was my same experience. And I've said that many times. I have invested in mentorship when I had absolutely nothing. I was living, literally living in my parents' basement broke going to Yukon because my parents made me go back to college. You know, I was yep. still in my twenties and said, well, you could live here with your kids if you go to college. So mm -hmm. I go to college, come across, start going to all of these different, you know, things you hear on the radio. And I go to a class and he's offering me mentorship. And at the time it was $20,000. Mind you, this is 2009. It's, yep. it's hilarious that, and again, I, I tell people like it's, it's worth it. And so from my parents' basement, I ended up canceling one of my classes at Yukon to pay his down payment. Bold. One of the smartest decisions I've yeah. ever made. But I, no I bet your parents thought you were crazy though, right? I didn't tell them. Yeah, I couldn't that's tell. why. I didn't tell my husband, <laughs> couldn't tell my parents. They would have like literally, I, I, I think, <laughs> and I'm saying literally using it probably wrong, like literally strangled me. Um, but again, it was the best decision I ever made. And people say, well, how did you get the courage to do that? I said, it just felt like it yeah. was the right thing to do. Like it would, it seemed like these people, this is a person knows something I don't know and they're willing to teach it to me. Isn't that what school is? Yeah, but I, I got to throw out this qualifier because I, I think that there's two types of people and I've been trying to figure out why some people succeed and why some people fail, even when they have a mentor. I mean, even I've had students over the years and some <laughs> fail and some do well. And it got to the point where I realized, oh, there's a key difference of knowing who's going to win and who's going to fail. And, and for me, it comes down to this one thing. In life, you don't have time to master everything. And most people will only master a few things. A doctor, for example, spends 10 years in college to master his medical trade. And then for the rest of his life, he or she is going to be a doctor. And they're probably not going to have time to master a lot of other things. Maybe they really have a fun passion like table tennis and play it recklessly. And maybe they become tournament worthy and really good at it. But it's not like you're going to master 10 things or 100 things or 1,000 things. You're going to master a handful. And yeah. so my personal belief is that if someone says, well, Chris... I want to, I want what you have in real estate. Then I would say, cool. Are you a DIYer or a DFYer? In other words, are you going to, are you going to put the Malcolm Gladwell 10,000 hours in yeah. 
to become a true student and have mentors and read all the books and master this, then you deserve to make all the money. But if you know that you want the byproduct of the money and you're not willing to actually put in the mastery, you're just going to mess around a little bit, then you, then you should find someone that is an expert and split the money with them and take mm. advantage of their expertise. So I, 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 20 years ago, I stopped coaching people in real estate. And I said, actually, here's my niche. Let's talk about it. I'm going to partner with you if you got money and I'll do all the work because I don't believe in the adage of give a, a man or a woman a fish and you'll feed them for a day. But if you teach them how to fish, you'll, you'll feed them for a lifetime. Like that only matters if they want to master it. Most mm. people will lie to themselves and they're not. So I've kind of made a name for myself. I'm not the coach. I basically yes. say, I'm the guy you come to if you want me to give you fish yes. reliably, because mm -hmm. I could train you how to try to get my ROIs. I will school you every day of the week. I spent millions of dollars building a team of 200 experts that will do it for you. And so um, what I do is I find a solution for the people that say, hey, I'm honest. Yes. I know that I'm going to cut corners. I don't want to go to Home Depot. I know that I don't want to you know, manage 10 tenants. And I don't want to be the landlord. So right. Crone... I'll partner up with you and I know I'm going to walk away from half the money, yeah. but I'm going to play at the top of your learning curve on $2 yeah. billion dollars of transactions and we ain't going to yeah. screw up. I bet if I make half yeah. with you, that's probably way more than I would make 100% on my own. I love it. I love it. High five. So, okay, well, make sure I put the link below and click that link as a free gift. So talk about the, the transition because obviously there was this point. So like I said, I'm still in coaching. Uh, I started my coaching program in, you know, 2014 or whatever. So I'm and, and 10 years in. Yeah. And just being honest, love you guys to death. I am probably getting to the point where I'm starting to say, you know what, I've had enough of this. I've made all the money. I've coached. I've had some amazing students. We partnered in some amazing ways. I have tons of portfolios and people now that I'm on the YouTube, just like you, people send me deals all the time. I don't even have to market it really has changed the whole YouTube situation and TikTok where people are constantly sending me great deals. Obviously, we have to comb through them and pick them out. So it's really helped the investing side so much. But what was it that made you say, I'm going to go this route and start partnering with people versus still coaching? Because obviously you have the love for it. You're still putting out great yeah. content. You're still teaching. You're still yeah. writing books and doing events. So it's still there. So what made you make the transition? I'm, a, I'm an all or nothing guy. Okay. So for me... I thought, hey, I did some coaching and it's like, if I take on 10 students and let's just say half of them go on to buy real estate and become successful. In our industry, we would say that that's a really high success rate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a really high success rate. And for me, yeah. I was like, I don't actually like that. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want to have a single student that fails. And so I just said, you know, I, I never mess up on my, on my real estate. So if I just bring people in on my deals then I'm going to feel like I'm walking around with a hundred percent success rate. And so it was more of a, it was, it was a philosophy also rooted in this idea when they say the riches are in the niches, yeah. that means that you got a niche down where nobody is. And in our field, single family is not what people use for scale. They use multifamily. And um, even just yesterday, I had a buddy of mine that has a hundred doors just say, dude, why are you still doing single family? 6,000 deals. Like, why aren't you graduating to multifamily? Mm -hmm. I said, well, I can't graduate to a lower ROI. When you show me a consistent homogenous flow of multifamily deals that can produce a 50% annualized ROI, I'll look into that sector. But until then, I basically scaled something that no that everyone thought was too impossible. Good point. To Good point. Okay. So now you are really, like I said, I, I don't know how much time you have. So I'll actually take a, a quick and I got I got a, a couple time. I got a couple minutes left. So we got okay. time for two good questions. Okay. So all right. All right, so you just brought up a really amazing point there. So I really want to say, okay, so how, why did you stay in single family? Obviously, I still kind of play in that world, but I do have some multifamily. I've gotten a commercial a little bit, but you're right. Everyone comes at you that you need to be doing multifamily. It's apartments. It's the Grand Cardone fun stuff. Like, yeah. why did you stay in, in, in single family? What do you talk to me about that? They're confusing, Noel, ROI for strategy. And you see, that's a problem. People get caught up on strategy. Oh, you should do flips. No, no, no. You should do wholesaling. No, no, no. You should you should literally do assignments on commercial deals. No, you should do development. I'm like, actually, what I really care about is what will take the least time, the least effort, the least risk and make me the most money. And that's going to come down to a reflection of ROI and ROT, 
which is a return on time, not just a return on investment. So show me the game where my ROT and my ROI are, my ROI is the highest and my ROT is the least. And that's where I'm going to win. So if you take a look at real estate, I, I spend one hour a month on my portfolio, but I'm buying a house every day. So it's expanding like crazy. It's it's I don't want to reveal the real number, but it's equivalent to me making hundreds of thousands of dollars per hour mm. in the game of real estate. And that's because I value my time, but my ROI and single family produces in ROI significantly higher than multifamily. In fact, if you look at the next decade on trends, we're missing 7.2 million single family homes. Multifamily is exhausted. We literally mm -hmm. have overbuilt too many doors. So for the next decade, I don't even wanna be in multifamily. Single family, there's a reason in the last five years and why the government this year is cracking down on corporations and hedge funds that over the next decade wanna buy 10% of the single family sector and make it corporate owned real estate. And the government is saying that's hurting the American dream. Well, the reason why they'll, they'll come in and compete with me in one of my hot markets, North Carolina that I moved out of is because they were paying 130, 150% of value because they know what will happen to the value of real estate with right. time. And over the next decade, I believe I know what is going to happen to the value of single family homes. And it's going to maintain my really high ROI. So I'm going to stay in this space because I've mastered it. And at this point, I can play it better than just about anyone else. And I don't have any competition in my niche that has been able to scale as big as me. So, right. and, and so there's strategy in that which yeah. is niche down and be where nobody is. And you'll always find an advantage. It'll be the hardest place according to the perception of others to operate in, but it's where you stand to make your greatest winnings if you can figure it out. I love it. I love it. All right. So what are your big plans for the future? Like I heard you say, I'm going to be a billionaire. I'm going to move this. Like what's, what's, what's next for Chris Crone? Cause you've done so much already. Uh, well, we're definitely scaling up real estate. I've got my first public fund that is actually debuting in the next couple of months. So we're going to be able to go out to the entire market and publish our ROIs and give people access to something that you just don't normally get access to. And then, you know, beyond that, we're going to keep uh, doing all the private equity that we're doing. And, you know, in August, I'm out with my foundation again, with my whole family, we do a lot of uh, rescue work and, and basically finding the innocent victims on this planet that no one is rescuing. And we find them and we love them and we give them what they need. So there's, there's a lot of fun things on the horizon. I love it. I love it. Well, I appreciate you sharing all of this great information. I appreciate all of the different um, content that you have put out teaching people for so many years. You're young, but you're amazing and have been doing this for a very long time. So I really appreciate that. I'm going to make sure uh -huh. I put those links in the bio and I really appreciate your time today, Chris. All right, Noel. Thank you so much, everybody. Appreciate you. Bye.